there. Meanwhile, time to say very good morning to my paper reviewer this morning. That's Bill Bogart. He's political reporter at Reaction. Bill, good morning to you. Very good morning, James. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Uh, now, uh, before we get to the stories that you've picked out from the papers, of which there are uh, a number, uh, we have a job to do, and that's to go through the front pages. Um, inevitably, they're all focused on war in Ukraine. It, the question is whether they're focusing on the personal tragedy the personal strength, or indeed uh, the personal madness, on all of those things, the very human side of this uh, coming to the fore. Daily Mirror, you've got a picture of uh, President uh, Volodymyr Zelensky uh, on that video call yesterday. Um, it's at times like this that regardless of how you voted, I was quite proud of the way that the European Union and Parliament responded to, uh, to President uh, Zelensky. I think so. Um... Take, I think Germany is a prime example of that because since Britain, you know, leaving the European Union, um, everyone sees, you know, within Brussels, Germany are kind of the leading force and particularly the new uh, president, uh, Chancellor and Olaf Scholz uh, and, you know, them having to increase defence spending, also taking quite a hard line when it comes to Kremlin-backed state media outlets, uh, Russia Today or RT as they call uh, themselves, uh, Sputnik uh, as well. And they have quite taken quite a precise role and obviously Zelensky spoke to the European Parliament uh, just yesterday, quite a powerful speech as well, when it's in fact the English translator nearly uh, broke up and they got a standing ovation. So yeah. it's kind of great to see them taking a, a leading role in this and showing actually how even though Britain has left the European Union, we're cooperating quite heavily uh, with our European friends and allies uh, I think, on this treacherous uh, situation. I think that's very helpful, but I, I, it does strike me that YouTube have acted on RT. They're taking them down uh, for the time being. Um, why is Ofcom being so slow? I'm not quite sure. I think because, uh, for one, I think as Boris Johnson told the House of Commons last week uh, when Sir Keir Starmer during Prime Minister's question was urging Boris Johnson uh, to, to, to revoke the licence of RT, um, uh, Boris Johnson said that we live in a democratic society where we believe in free speech. Uh, of course, it's not particularly helping with the discourse as well, having that misinformation. But also, you've got to think of... But when you have free speech, though, you, you want to have information and people who are held to account. And this is part yes. of the problem with the internet, which is people can say, uh, look, free speech, of course, you can say what you like. But there's a difference between saying what you like and spreading uh, either um, uh, malevolent or... or um, I suppose just just falsehoods. No, that's definitely the, the case. But I think you've got to think of the repercussions that could come with revoking, uh, for instance, the, the license of RT. Uh, I would rather have, you know, uh, a, a television station and RT function in a, in a democratic society like Britain than have... Uh, you know, Western-based journalists, like for instance, at the BBC uh, or ITV or other other newspapers, to to being banned by the Kremlin. I mean, well, we've already it's... seen there's only one more independent media mm. outlet, a liberal-leaning outlet, left in Russia uh, because of the fact that people are getting so much of their information from the internet and seeing that actually the picture uh, being depicted in Russian media is not what it's made out to be. And it's very interesting that the younger perhaps crowd uh, in Russia seeing one side of the story because that's where they get their news and the older lot who turn to state media mm -hmm. uh, having a very different view. Uh, Dead Express blitz but never beaten they say on their front page, the Daily Star the real legacy of bloody Vlad they say they've got a, a, a sort of like outline of a bomb which has Putin destructive cruel war criminal barbaric etc uh, then you've got the I newspaper the siege of Kiev, uh, the Ukrainian capital brace for mass bombardment as Russians invasion force changes tactics and I suppose there is this danger isn't there which a lot of the papers focus on which is Russia's invasion has not gone to plan so far. There is a huge amount of firepower that they have and they could simply ratchet it up and now go for a scorched earth policy. I think that's the case. I mean, when President Putin was giving that uh, that address to, to, the, to the Russian Federation, to the Russian people, saying that it's actually a peacekeeping mission, it's to denazify uh, Ukraine, but now what we've resulted... Yeah, is ironic that he's, that he's taken out a, it, a, it's, it's, it's absolutely a memorial it's to 100,000 dead it, It's abhorrent, <laughs> dead and Jews. the fact that it's, it's, a, it's a memorial to uh, for the Holocaust as well, and now you've got you know, as the eye says, a 40-mile convoy of Russian tanks with up to 15,000 troops uh, near Kiev, and yesterday the, the just disastrous and shocking scenes also of the uh, television centre being... Uh, 
completely demolished, resulting in, in five people dying. Um, yeah, they're, they're resulting in guerrilla tactics because they realise that it's not going to plan. The, the Ukrainian people are resilient. The West is on the side of the Ukrainian people and with President Zelensky. So now Putin is thinking, I need to you know uphold my mission basically to take ukraine not just the donbass region so i'm going to go go all out in this sense i'm gonna um i suppose I, i'm i'm fascinated as to how or why when you can see from the air this huge column i'm really surprised that somebody hasn't tried to take it out some of those tanks uh, and that column but then uh, i guess if the ukrainians don't have the firepower to do that they can't um, the Guardian newspaper, desperate rush for the uh, last train from Kiev. Uh, the Sun, barbaric, they say, uh, talking about uh, Vladimir Putin. I don't think there's any way back for him. He's a pariah and will be forever. Uh, Leaf now, Putin warns as he prepares to bombard Kiev. Russians seek to encircle city with 15,000 troops, they say. Uh, Financial Times leads on China offers role as peacemaker. Uh, shunned by the world, this is... Um, uh, the Kremlin uh, minister, uh, Mr. Lovro uh, Lavrov, uh, who the foreign minister, um, uh, he was blaming uh, the Ukraine for its invasion, uh, and everybody and just turned their and just and, and, and Liz Truss, and then just everybody just walked out. Daily Mail pray for Kiev, they say. Uh, then the te that's the um, Mail, the Daily Telegraph. Uh, Zelensky pleads with West to prevent genocide. So all sorts of stories going on. Meanwhile. Um, I know that that's a pretty heavy selection. However, mm. I dare say, uh, Bill, uh, you're excited by this uh, because it can only be described as today's uplifting news story of the day. Now, under the banner headline of You're Welcome, Britain's greatest gift to the world. Top TV, music, food and culture put the great into Britain and our gifts to the world, according to a poll. Now... I'm slightly disappointed by this list, I have to be honest, and it's one of these things which has been done by a firm, Santander, they should know better. Uh, fish and chips, uh, which is number one, they say that's the gift to the world by the British. Fish and chips, I'd hate to break this to you, it's not English, not British. No, it's not. No, it's, it comes from been, Central Europe. I think it's... I mean, it's probably more Ukrainian, uh, Polish, Russian, did, uh, did, Austrian. Did Gary Lineker, like, do a video, like, about how fish and chips was... Well, it's actually... Uh, a, a when justification the, for immigration. Well, it? the Jews, when they came over from uh, Poland particularly, um, they brought uh, fish and chips with them because they used to fry various things, and then that's kind of what it turned into. I suppose maybe, look, it's become a thing. We've adopted it in the same way that uh, you go to a curry house. I mean, that's become sort of very English, very British. Uh, anyway, uh, on, <laughs> also on the list, uh, number two, roast dinners. We can have those. Yeah. Uh, Sir David Attenborough, uh, full English breakfast, the internet, uh, cho Cadbury's chocolate. I mean, it's, it's a lot of food. It's a lot of food. Oh, it goes on. Cheddar cheese, uh, William Shakespeare, devour that. Uh, Beatles, Queen, Bond, BBC, uh, the sandwich. We gave the world the sandwich, <laughs> more tea. Uh, afternoon tea, Marks and Spencers, uh, Rolls Royce, uh, Aston Martin, David Bowie, Digestive Biscuits, Yorkshire Tea, Crumpets. A lot of Kit Kats. A lot it's, of, a it's lot just of, food. It's just food, <laughs> basically. And where's Marmite on that list? Where's no. Marmite on that list? There are a lot of things. Uh, okay, so under the banner headline there, you're welcome. The world you are welcome to the things which are great and British. Aren't we fantastic? Mm. Uh, we're going to come to stories that Bill's picked out in the papers in just a few moments' time. You're listening to me, James Max, here on Talk Radio. So, uh, Bill, let's turn our attention to your first story, which is GP surgeries. How on earth are we going to get rid of the backlog? Well, the, re the way we're going to get through the backlog is by um, forcing GPs to uh, open routine appointments uh, during evenings and also during weekends. Of course, there's a, there's a huge backlog because of the coronavirus pandemic and a lot of GPs have been having to do checks and uh, calls with uh, patients uh, remotely over the phone i mean um, is it right to, i mean i suppose if you've got a gp surgery and you've got a number of different doctors you can in the same way that look this place is 24 7 you can yes. have you can have a, a sort of good rotor that means that you can open longer but it, you, you can't necessarily ask people to work more hours though can you well the i think there's about flexibility as well within the workforce and also Many practices already have this system in place. Uh, they do it just because they want to to mm. uh, follow the backlog. And also you've got this uh, huge investment coming into the health and uh, social care sector because of the hike in uh, national insurance through the levy uh, that went through parliament. Um, and I think even though there's a lot of discontent within unions, ultimately patients, politicians, uh, and then also uh, NHS Improvement England and, uh, have been pushing for this for quite a long time well, because they realised that 
you know, routine checks need to, to happen and we need to return to a sense of normality. So this is a viable uh, solution. Oh, it's all about increasing capacity, I guess. Um, yeah. Let's talk about um, uh, Chelsea. So Chelsea Football Club, owned by Roman Abramovich. Mm -hmm. It's on the front pages, but it's also on the back pages. I mean, do you think, uh, do you think that Boris Johnson today in... Uh, PMQs is going to be asked about whether or w if he should be taking more action. We've got so much Russian money here in the UK. Uh, there is an argument to say, until or unless somebody comes out and says, I, I first of all, I don't support the action, and secondly, uh, to criticise uh, Putin or, or Putin's actions rather than support him, um, is it fair and reasonable to say, right, OK, well, then we're just going to freeze your assets? I think especially in a, a Abramovich has been a key individual, an oligarch, which... Uh, MPs have been uh, calling for action to be taken, for him to be sanctioned and for his assets to be frozen. I think it started when he claimed in the House of Commons that he had been sanctioned, but then Chris Byrne uh, called a point of order and said, actually, that's not true. And then that kind of highlighted the wider problem about Abramovich's uh, isn't, assets, uh, especially his own Chelsea the problem, Football Club. Part of the problem with Abramovich is, um, of course, he owns Chelsea Football Club. Um, the fans, uh, you know, they, they love their club. Of course. And, and people People do um, and this is very problematic because you've got somebody who has assimilated themselves into UK life he's been here for 20 years uh, he's injected a lot of money into that club and the fans and the supporters are obviously very keen on that money remaining but then on the other hand um, some action has to be taken and you, just because you're familiar with somebody doesn't necessarily mean that you can't or shouldn't take action. Yeah, I'm actually astonished as a football fan myself to see the lengths of which fans will go to defend you know, their owners, especially Chelsea because... I you see, know, which team are you then? I'm a Manchester United supporter. Oh, I see. Uh, but, uh, and I don't, you know, I, I have a lot of jealousy for Chelsea. They've been incredibly successful under since Abramovich bought the club. You know, they've won two Champions League, they've won several Premier League titles, FA Cups, League Cups, Club World Cups, you, you know, you can name these pretty much won it all under Abramovich. You know, he's had that influence, but obviously the situation in Ukraine and him mm. seeming not to uh, denounce the crisis uh, in the statement call when he announced that he's putting uh, the functioning of the club in the in a charitable foundation he called it a conflict didn't call it a war didn't condemn Putin and that uh, and that slightest. I suppose is, is is where the issue starts now just moving yeah. on because we're otherwise we'll run out of time just a very quick question how to annoy uh, the whole of the population of the country give MPs a pay rise I, I yeah. actually take the view that if, pay, if MPs are getting a pay rise of, what, 2.7%, mm. I, I think everybody is going to need to push for a pay rise this year because the cost of living has risen. And if employers decide that they're not going to give their staff uh, a, a pay rise, well, so be it, and, and individuals can take their choices. I, we seem to get very exercised with this. I actually want our MPs to be paid properly. What, what do you think? No, I think it's definitely the case. I think if you look at uh, members of parliament and other uh, countries in Europe, they've played significantly more. I think Italy is a prime example. I think they, they get paid nearly double of what... Uh, a UK politician or member of parliament earns. and the IPSA chairman Richard Lloyd said there's actually a lot of justification for giving MPs a pay rise given the fact that they're, they're busier than ever because of surgeries you know many coming forward about the cost of living crisis mm. Covid um, but also it has to reflect society in many ways and you know these aren't you know ordinary workers they're, 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 they're established individuals public figures uh, who work long hours uh, in the interests of, of the of voters so i think it is totally justified okay justified it is uh, you may or may not disagree i dare say there'll be further discussion <laughs> about that on the station later on in the day meanwhile daily mirror um piers morgan is in the news um and oh well i mean he's soon to be of this parish yes indeed. well he's already of this parish because he, he writes column in the sun uh, mm -hmm. but talk tv that's on the way that's going to be exciting stuff and there is discussion about talk tv in today's mirror yes so piers morgan uh going to talk tv is very exciting and talks to sort uh you know the first major interview with with jk rowling uh since you know the, the huge uh, transgender Ism row and her, her views on on that uh, really to speak out and and I mean have that row really. really does define the difference if you like between and it's in the papers actually today that um, it's talking about uh, Nicola Sturgeon uh, her views that mm -hmm. there are a lot of people older people perhaps uh, who disagree with her uh, views on um, gender yeah and in the same way that J K Rowling but then of course all the actors within the Harry Potter movies are pretty much at, at uh, arm's length from J K Rowling and don't happen to agree with her no and uh, and you know they're at loggerheads and uh, I think well you might disagree 
it, it, what you know reviews on transgender is i think as a sense of tolerance and she has suffered quite a lot of abuse and oh she's suffered for, loads of abuse massive, and to be and honest, I've, I've been on the other side of the yeah moment. no i, 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 I remember the Rosie, it. yeah of course and uh, and i think hopefully this interview should be compelling enough maybe it is going to be of this parish and also Piers has also uh, secured uh, uh, Britney Britney Spears as well oh, so it's, that's it's quality it's, so I, I can't wait to see uh, what he does uh, in this building uh, meanwhile let's just talk a little bit about uh, I think quite a lot is, is, is the answer I mean look Piers does nothing but uh, make a few waves and, and, and why not